Namaskar, uh, welcome. Good morning to everyone logging in from United States. Good evening to everyone logging in from India. And I would say a general good day to everyone logging in from rest around the world. It's a pleasure having you all back on this monthly online leadership lecture that we at Parthagush Academy of Leadership, we conduct month on month and always have some dignitaries coming and addressing us on leadership and their experiences. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here as well to uh, have, have start off this event for all of you. And we today also have an, another exciting uh, achiever, a person who is a master. I would, in fact, do not wanting to, I'm tempted to introduce her, but then I would let uh, uh, Hare Krishna sir introduce uh, uh, Gaurangadas uh, Prabhu in that manner. But then it's really an honor and a pleasure to have you, uh, Prabhuji, here. Uh, uh, thank you for accepting our uh, invitation to address this audience. Uh, which is there. Uh, we will give you a little brief about what we have been doing in the next few minutes as the academy and also in terms of what our vision and mission has been. As per my part, I would just give you a little brief in terms of the ground level activities that the academy has been doing. Uh, we've been conducting a regular online monthly lecture. This is lecture number 29th month of month. And we've been having dignitaries like Suresh Prabhu, Narayan Murthy, uh, Mitab Khan, Ambassador Deepak Bora, and many more addressing this particular forum month uh, every month that we do. Uh, apart from that, we've been doing at IIT Kharagpur, we've been uh, conducting training programs, five days leadership training programs for National Informatics Center. In fact, we have some participants of National Informatics Center, NIC, at IIT Kharagpur today, and they are joining us uh, from the training room as well. Uh, apart from that, we also do a regular training with Ministry of Education under the Malvia Mission Teachers Training Program, where we've been training senior teachers from centrally funded institutes on leadership, and they are the future leaders who would be teaching training leaders of the next generation of our country. We've been also conducting leadership programs for students uh, uh, at different academies. We recently had a one-day leadership workshop for student leaders of NIT Warangal. And uh, we are in process of conducting many more such programs uh, in the future as well. However, for uh, anything more, I would want to hand over to our uh, founder, in, uh, person, the person who's inspired us, the person whose thought uh, has led, led to this moment on leadership, which we are uh, here at Partha Ghosh Academy of Leadership, Dr. Partha S. Ghosh, who is joining us from uh, Boston. So, uh, good morning to you, and would like uh, you to take over from here and share your uh, thoughts and also about the vision and mission of the academy. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pranav. Uh, greetings from Boston, Namaskar. I'm so delighted and so honored to have among us Prabhu Sri Gorangadas, known as a distinguished spiritual leader and engineer. Sustainable sustainability advocate, who will be formally introduced very soon. But before we have the privilege to listen to him, let me just lay out the backdrop for today's discussion. And I will just spend a few moments to talk about the purpose of our academy, why we consider the insights from the ancient Vedic wisdom extremely important to shape leadership mindset, behaviors of the 21st century issues. You know, I was very lucky to have the privilege to serve and work with leaders in corporate and governments in more than three dozen nations. And having worked with them, discussed challenges of the our civilization, I personally do believe our civilization is in a serious crisis, perhaps at a point of inflection, maybe in a state of flux, affected by multiple tensions all across geopolitical, geoeconomic, climate, human migration. And most glaring of that is the wealth gap. It is clear that the fundamental equations of the past, influenced by Adam Smith's power of self-interest, Charles Darwin's equation of survival of the fittest, has been drawn into what I call the zero-sum game, for someone to win, someone else has to lose. In the process, I think all of us believe people and societies have become self-centered, communities are getting fragmented, and more importantly, our moral compass, I believe, has been broken. 
and sense of ethics have been compromised and nations, instead of being collaborative in a continuous state of conflict, the relations are becoming adversarial. And the, in the mid middle, we are also facing the dangerous disbalance of the three E's, which is ethics, ecology, and equity. So I do believe we need to establish a plus sum logic by promoting the concept of one humanity, both top down and bottom up. In that context, the role of Vedic philosophy in shaping a more enlightened global civilization is indeed significant. We are very proud that the Academy of Leadership um, at IIT Kharagpur follows a model which we call the 3PI model, which essentially integrates the Eastern and the Western philosophy with the Vedic philosophy at its core. So we do collaborate with organizations such as ISKCON and many others around the world to take this leadership movement forward. Now, just a few words as, as I see, which Prabhuji would obviously enlighten us, but few words that way we see uh, at the academy where the Vedas belong. The Vedas, as you know, have guided millions in spiritual and ethics over thousands of years. It's not new. I do believe it also offers profound lessons on leaderships of today and future that are timeless. Vedic Sutras remind us that leadership is not just about managing people or processes. It is about embodying and practicing higher principles of integrity, service, and wisdom. When we lead with dharma, yojna, and satta, we elevate ourselves, but everyone around us. Particularly the principle of dharma I find at the core of Vedic philosophy truly underscores the importance of duty and righteousness. After all, leadership is all about understanding one duty, not just towards an organization, not towards himself. It is towards society and as a whole towards the civilization. In the same spirit of self-awareness, the idea of Shiva, selfless service, the importance of shansara or the cycles of life imply the importance of adaptability and resilience. And that's what we believe at the Academy of Leadership. Accordingly, the, what we call the Parthagush Academy of Leadership, IIT Kharagpur, our mission is very simple. Working with thought leaders like you from all over the world, through the sessions like the one we are having today, we are developing personalized Personalized, I want to underscore that leadership development program that integrates both Eastern and Western philosophies. We cultivate in students and faculty, corporate executives, government officials, including those in politics, both in rural and, ur rural and urban India and worldwide, three things. Firstly, we want to see higher level of confidence so that we future leaders could address complex issues which are becoming more and more complex, a spirit of selflessness which inspired people to put social interests ahead of personal interests and creative mindsets that forge enlightened synergies between different streams of thought. So we have embarked on a journey. We look view this as a movement. We want to work with all of you to, this, to ensure this movement affects 8 billion people around the world. So it is a very ambitious endeavor, but if we truly believe in Vedic philosophy, we should take on such ambitions. We should live ambitiously. We should trigger inspiring thoughts. We should take actions which make a difference. So Vedic philosophy is timeless. It has lived through 5,000 years of enrichment, but time has come now to really use the lessons of Vedic philosophy and leadership to take our world forward. In that spirit, we are very fortunate to have Prabhu Sri Gauranga Das. As you know, he's a very distinguished leader. He will be formally introduced soon. So let me extend my greetings and namaskar from Boston. And thank you very much.
A very good evening to all. I'm happy and privileged to invite Sriman Gaurang Das Prabhu for this month's talk from Partha Gosha of Academy. Sri Gaurang Das, an IIT Bombay graduate, is a renowned spiritual leader, social activist, and environmentalist known for his contributions towards sustainability, rural development, and spiritual leadership. As the director of ISKCON's Govardhan Eco Village, founded by our spiritual master Sri Radhanath Swami Maharaj, Gaurangdas has helped a key role in its success, earning it accolades such as at the United Nations World Tourism Organization Award in 2017. He facilitated GEV's accreditation to multiple United Nations bodies, including UNEP, UNCCD, ECOSOC, and CBD. Serving as UNEP's Faithful Earth Counselor on behalf of ISKCON highlights his commitment to environmental causes. He plays a pivotal role in transforming Govardhan Eco Village, a sustainable farming community in Maharashtra, into a global model for water conservation, renewable energy, and organic farming. Sriman Gaurangdas is actively involved in educational initiatives, sitting on the board of uh, Govardhan School of Public Leadership, which prepares students for civil services exams. Additionally, he serves as the administrative director of Bhaktivedanta Research Center, BRC, dedicated to creating libraries of Vedic literatures and manuscripts and offering MA and PhD programs in philosophy. In addition, he is a uh, visiting faculty at IIM Nagpur. As a governing body commissioner member of International Society for Krishna Consciousness, ISKCON, Gaurangdas promotes holistic living and rural development, rural empowerment, providing education, healthcare, and sustainable livelihoods to marginalized communities. His teaching focus on aligning personal growth with service to humanity, blending ancient wisdom with modern practices to tackle contemporary issues. His notable contributions to extend to the literal realm of with two national best books, uh, selling books, that is Art of Resilience and Art of Focus. Recognized for presenting Vedic knowledge in a contemporary and engaging manner, he has spoken at prestigious events such as TEDx and in corporate, uh, in corporate settings, including Intel, Salesforce and Google. Sriman Gaurangdas inaugurated the Govardhan Anakshetra program at Govardhan Eco Village, demonstrating his commitment to distributing free sanctified food to the pilgrims and the villages of Palga district. As governing body commissioner of ISKCON, he has promotes holistic living, rural empowerment, providing education, healthcare, and sustainable livinghood to many people. As a mentor and speaker, he inspires many to lead lives rooted in spirituality, environmental consciousness, and social responsibility. I'm happy to share that he is my spiritual mentor and guiding me in my personal and spiritual aspect. Now, I request Sriman Gaurangdas Prabhu to deliver his enlightening talk on leadership sutras from ancient Vedic wisdom for the benefit of all participants. Over to you, Sriman Gaurang Prabhuji. Thank you very much, Mr. Hare Krishna Ji. And uh, thank you, Partha Ji, for your kind words and excellent introduction. And congratulations for inspiring such an amazing initiative at IIT Kharagpur. In his famous TED Talk, Mr. Dr. Robert Waldinger, he speaks of lessons from the longest study on happiness which has happened in history. This was conducted by Harvard. And he asks a question that if we are going to invest now in our future best self, where would you put your time and your energy? And there was a recent survey of millennials asking them what are their most important goals. And more than 80% of those millennials said my major goal is to get rich. Another 50% of the same young adults they said, my most important goal is to become famous. So the pattern is to work, push hard, achieve more. So the Harvard study of adult development is very interesting. It's the longest study of 75 years conducted on the lives of probably more than 700 people questioning them about their work, their home, their lives, their health. And 
without knowing about how their journey in future should be or would be. So around 50 to 60 of the original 700 plus are still alive participating in the study. So since 1938, two groups of people were chosen. One who went to Harvard and the other from a, a group of boys they were from Boston's poorest neighborhoods, from very troubled and disadvantaged families uh, from Boston in the 30s who were living in tenements without even running water. And the question which was asked, what keeps us happy? The clearest message which came out of the 75 year study is good relationships keep us happier and healthier. And therefore, three major relationship lessons come out from these studies. First, that social connections are really good for us. Loneliness kills. Second, uh, of course, people are more socially connected to family, to friends, to community. They are happier, healthier. They live longer. Second is, it's not the number of friends that matter but it's the quality and the intensity of your relationships that matter. Living in the midst of conflict is maybe bad health, but when you live in good positive relationships, it's protective. And people who are satisfied in their relationships at 50 were healthiest at 80. The third lesson is that good relationship does not only protect the body, but they protect our brain also. When people are in a relationship where they feel they can count on the other person in times of need, these people's memories, they continue to remain sharper and longer. And therefore, the message that good relationships are good for happiness and health, it's part of all of our ancient tradition. So, take the example of Ramayan. Ramayan has four characters. First is Ram. These four characters demonstrate four powerful qualities which are important for enabling leadership and happiness. As leaders, your major task is to influence decisions create ecosystems, create a culture where ultimately whether people are working or living their lives, they experience a sense of joy and happiness. And therefore, 75 years of Harvard study has shown it is the quality of the relationships which defines happiness. You may be in the highest paid consulting firm but if you are facing a major relationship crunch with someone who is extremely important for you and with whom you have had a close relationship before it affects you and it takes away your sense of satisfaction and happiness and as a result you are unable to actually produce your best so therefore when relationships get affected, it affects our happiness and then it affects our productivity. And therefore, the leaders have to ensure these four qualities so that ultimately we are able to have close, warm, congenial relationships. First is integrity. Lord Ram's character is that of integrity. So, when Dasharat Maharaj told Ram to go to the forest, Ram was ready to go instantly, but Dasharat told him, you better don't go. Why do you have to go right now? You can wait. You can disobey me. But Ram said, no. I have to follow the duty of a son of being obedient to his father. So therefore, Lord Ram 
was again and again provoked to give up the order. But he had a sense of integrity. What's the difference between honesty and integrity? Honesty is to speak what you have done and integrity is to do as you have spoken. So therefore, Ram is described as dharmagya satya sandhyascha pragyanam cha hite rataha. So he is dharmagya, knows his duties. Satya sandhyascha is completely dependent on satya and he is working always for others' benefit. Pragyanam cha hite rataha. Yesha svegyana sampanna shuchir vashya samadhiman. He is very famous. He is full of all knowledge and he is following the principles of dharma perfectly. And therefore, Lord Ram says, even when Vibhishan comes, Lord Ram is very, very clear. Sakrdeva prapanno yastavasmi itiyache abhyam zarvada tasmai dadamyetat vratam mama. If someone comes and says, I surrender to you, my dear Lord, even once he says, I will accept him. So, Lord Ram is true to his word. Lord Ram is embodiment of integrity. Lord Ram is always trying to protect the interests of those who are connected to him. So, therefore, the word Ram represents integrity and literally the word defined as Ramante Yogino Anante Satyananda Chidatmani Ram means an ocean of pleasure. And therefore, only when we live life with integrity, when there is synergy and harmony between our thoughts, words and actions, then we will experience real peace. When there is peace, only then happiness can come. So therefore, the first formula or sutra for leadership is integrity. The second sutra is Lakshman. Ram represents integrity. Lakshman represents service attitude. Lakshmano Lakshmi Sampanno Bahir Prana Ibappara Sarva Priyakarastasya Ramasya Pisharirata The word Lakshman comes from the word Lakshmi which means wealth. So what does Lakshman represent? Lakshman represents the wealth of Seva. For him the opportunity to serve Lord Ram was the greatest wealth. And therefore Therefore, he was not willing to stay in the palace when Ram is in the forest. He wanted to experience the poverty of forest and give up the prosperity of Ayodhya because for him the prosperity of Seva service was greater. Look. Therefore, Lakshman basically refers to one who is embodiment of service attitude. He is Lakshmi Sampanna. One who considers seva to be the greatest wealth. Just imagine the level of productivity we will have in our industries, in our corporations, in our organizations, where every person considers genuine seva to be their real wealth. Lakshman never aspired for material opulence or power. He declined position of being Yuvraj. He only aspired for association with Ram and unbroken service to him. So, Lakshman has few qualities. First is conscience. A dependent should know the master's mind, words and use it. So, when they are living at Panchabati, Ram tells Lakshman, can you build a cottage? And Lakshman immediately starts building a cottage. And then at that time, he says, how do you know how to to build this cottage and Lakshman says from childhood I was looking at how construction is done so that one day I can use these skills for your service. Therefore Bhavagyana means one who is deep in conscience with the master and understand the master's desire. There are six categories of unsatisfactory employees. The first category is Alirbano Jyotishika Stabdi Bhuta Kimebaka the first kind of unsatisfactory employee or team member in a team is Ali, who is fickle like a bee. And he follows the master's order only when it is favorable for him and he likes it, he is in mood. So the bee is 
very fickle. So this employee or this person is also very fickle. Bano. Second kind of employee is when asked for a service by the master, the servant will respond just like the arrow. Arrow has two kind of qualities. One, arrow pierces. So this employee or associate or team member will speak harshly to the very person who is giving him some instruction or request. And second quality of Bano is if you release it, if you release the arrow from the bow, it disappears and can never come back. So the second kind of employee is one who receives the instruction, leaves, and you cannot even follow up with him because he'll disappear out of sight. Third is Jyotishaka. The third kind of employee is one who procrastinates just like astrologer, Jyotishaka. You tell him, is the work done today? He says, no, no, tomorrow. You ask him tomorrow, he said, no, after four days. And it will go on procrastinating. He is always in astrological forecasting mode. Third is Tabdi Bhuta. One who is lazy, inactive, confused, stunned, motionless. You tell him something, he looks at you as if you are bringing him the worst news by giving him that task. Fifth is Kim Ekaka. As soon as you tell him, can you do this? Kim Ekaka, he will respond back, why I should do? Why only I should do? Why he cannot do? Why he cannot do? Why they cannot do? The person will ask so many questions that finally he will decide, let me only do. And then, Preshita Preshika. Sixth type is, as soon as he receives that activity or service, immediately delegates, passes on the buck and when it, things don't get done, and the boss asks, what happened? Why do didn't get, oh, sorry, I gave it to somebody, but he couldn't do it, what to do? So therefore, one who proactively serves by preempting what is required, one with the heart and the desire of the institution and the mission, he does everything to fulfill that desire and he does not want to act. So unless that thing is fulfilled, that person is called the Sevaka Uttama. Uttama Sevaka, which is the highest quality of employee or servant or a team member. So therefore, Bhavagyana means Lakshman had that Bhava that even before Ram could say anything, he knew what he wanted. And that's known as Ekatma Sevak. So we should not be the six types of employees I just described, but we should try to be the Ekatma Sevak like Lakshman, who had a deep conscience. So therefore, first was integrity, second is conscience, third is, yeah, okay, now this, the second principle apart from uh, conscience is Kritagyena. So Lakshman had also competence which is acting with confidence based on previous experience. Usually a prince doesn't serve another prince. But Lakshman gained experience by seeing how cottages are built, trained on it, and within no time, he knew that I will use this skill set in Ram service. So he had prepared in peace. So he did not have to bleed in war. So many times we think we will only develop this skill set when we are asked. No. So you have to have the competence along with conscience. And the third is Dharma Gyana character. He was selfless. He made a house and cottage for Lord Ram. Sita did not build any quarters for himself. Stood outside as a guard. This is his character. When Sita's ornaments fell on the ground when she was going in Pushpak Viman and the Monkeys brought it to Lord Ram. Lord Ram looked at Lakshman and said, do you recognize these ornaments? And at that time, Lakshman, demonstrating the high caliber of his character, says, Naham janami ke yure, naham janami kundale, nu pure janami nityam padha vandanat. My dear Ram, what are you saying? I have never looked at Sita Devi above her feet. Naham janami ke yure. I do not know her earrings, how it looks. Naham janami kundale. I do not know how her earrings, her necklace, her, uh, you know, all other ornaments on her face, they look. But nupur eva 
abhijanami i only know how the pile or uh, the, the 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 bracelets or the ornaments decorating her feet look like because nityam pada bivandanat i'm always looking at her feet in spite of all of this sita when she heard lord ram crying out for help she said to lakshman go and get ram go and get ram lakshman refused no ram has told me to take care of you sita gives a major accusation which breaks lakshman's heart to pieces she says the reason and you are not going from here is you have only come to the forest so that one day you will get a chance to kill ram and enjoy with me just imagine what a major assassination of character so when one's character is attacked and competence is questioned then practically it is impossible for someone to survive but lakshman continued serving so therefore ram represents integrity lakshman represents service attitude bharata represents tolerance the third important quality for leadership and happiness which is bharata rajya bharanat bibhrati iti bharata why is he called bharata when kaikai orchestrated this conspiracy bharat had no role to play but because bharat was the beneficiary everybody thought he is responsible it's called circumstantial misunderstanding it does not depend on how many degrees you have this circumstantial misunderstanding can happen from a chawl from a one bedroom house to a 15 bed bedroom mansion palace so all of this conspiracy happened in ayodhya which was a palace and therefore bharat was accused by the ayodhya vasis of being a co-conspirator darshara departed accusing the bharat should not come and touch my body because he is a co-conspirator vasishtha he doubted kaushalya doubted guha doubted bharadwaj muni got doubted so many people whom you love they start doubting your character and feel you are responsible and dashara departed by giving this last will that bharat is a co-conspirator sinner he is extremely you know obsessive about power he has orchestrated this entire episode to send ram to the forest and dashara departs just imagine the load of misunderstanding which bharat has to carry his own father whom he loved the most bharat has no chance to clarify just imagine when your closest people misunderstand you accuse you and suddenly throw walls between you and them it pains the heart you may be eating the best food but at the back of your mind that pain that hurt haunts you that's a load that's called bhara and because bharata tolerated that misunderstanding he is called bharata infinite capacity to bear pain and burden and so what is bharata's tolerance of pain you know in this sense bharata experiences the pain of accusation and then when finally he approaches you know lord ram he says you go and take over the kingdom take charge of the kingdom so the heavy load of the kingdom he carried with him so therefore he is known as bharata bhar wahi 1:30 in the morning he would go and take a bath in sarayu because after 2 o'clock when the citizens would come they see bharata they'll take stones and beat him people change organizations mostly not because of lack of increase in pay most people leave organizations because they find the environment toxic their coworkers toxic their bosses toxic their teams toxic or people who are subordinate to them accusing them backbiting discussing all kinds of political things and makes life extremely challenging so just imagine bharat had to govern and administer an entire group of people of ayodhya who hated him that's called bhara therefore he was so dutiful that he was willing to carry that load just to execute 
And so it is said in 14 years, Bharata grew the GDP of Ayodhya by 10 times. When people would come for, you know, withdrawal of cash, he would tell them you have to ask, you know, Lord Ram. When they would come to deposit tax, he would immediately take. He would, he would tell otherwise if they wanted to withdraw, he said, ask the slippers, paduka, like that. So therefore, he tolerated the heavy weight of misunderstanding accusations. Without defending, he accepted the heavy weight of the responsibility of administering Ayodhya, even though he had no desire to do so. So Bharata represents tolerance and Shatrugna represents humility, which means absence of ego. Shatrugna, Shatrugna, Nitya Shatrugna, Nitaha Preeti Puraskrata. So therefore, Shatrugna means one who has conquered the enemy within. Bharate he was so close to Bharata that he would do whatever Bharata told him to do. He was fully in alignment. You can only be in alignment with somebody when you have overcome your ego. The whole world was glorifying Ram. They were accusing uh, Bharata. But that did not stop Shatrugna from being loyal to Bharata. That kind of loyalty we need. So that in the midst of ups and downs, topsy-turvy situation, people do not give up their particular situation. So therefore, Krishna says, Yogastha Kuru Karmani Sangam Tyaktva Dhananjaya Siddhya Siddhya Samobhotva Samattam Yoga Uchchate The combination of action, knowledge, renunciation, meditation and devotion is what is known as yoga. Yoga emphasizes increasing one's awareness. We are living in a world where we are bombarded by weapons of mass distraction. Smartphones, electronic billboards, wall-to-wall -wall televisions, GPS locations, everything. Any distractions means novelty. Anything new associated with increase in dopamine levels. Neurochemical associated with pleasure and reward. In 2017, Microsoft find out, found out that the human attention span has come down from 12 seconds to 8 seconds. So the largest number of internet users have grown from 4, 4, uh, 413 million users in 2000 to 4.62 billion in 2020. There's a global penetration rate of almost 60%. 65% of internet users in India use internet daily. Only 39% of the world population has internet access. But the internet addiction is at 6%. 12% of the websites are pornographic. 2.3 billion pornographic websites. And therefore, distraction causes American businesses $650 losses per year. 64% by car accident. And not only the lack of self-control is evident in internet usage, but also in consumption of addicting substances. Alcohol, tobacco, 42% of the adults in the world consume alcohol in 2010, while in India it was 15%. Countries like France have 95% adult alcohol consumers. Alcohol is responsible for 2.8 million premature deaths globally, 5.8 lakh deaths per annum in India. Smoking killed almost 100 million people in 1900 to 2000 people a 2000 period and it's estimated to kill in 2000 to 2100 period almost 1 billion people. It causes 6 million deaths per annum, around one death every second. So therefore, if you look at food waste, 2.3 billion tons of the food is wasted. The food waste in UK, US and Europe put together can feed 1 billion people. 2 billion tons of Municipal solid waste is generated every three, every year and it's going to reach almost 3.4 billion metric tons by 2050. Lack of self-control, lack of discipline over food is a major cause of around 18 million deaths in 2017 due to cardiovascular diseases, 10 million deaths due to cancer and 5 million deaths due to obesity. These statistics are revealing two clear trends. People across the world, leaders across the world have lost their ability for sense control, self-control. They're imbalanced physically, emotionally, socially. 
and this individual imbalance is taking a toll on the planet big time in accelerating climate change. What is the solution? We need to help people in improving their self-discipline, self-control. And therefore, the practice of yoga needs commitment. If we do not commit to anything, we'll be distracted by everything. We must not give up a practice because of the time needed to accomplish it. A habit is a lifestyle to be lived, not a finish line to be crossed. One's commitment to a process will determine one's progress. Disciplined people are better at structuring their lives. It does not require heroic self-control and willpower. The value of what we drive doesn't matter as much as the values which drive us. Therefore, I am very, very excited and impressed with Mr. Partho Ghosh for creating this school for inculcating Vedic values in leadership because spirituality and yoga empowers us to reclaim our destiny, do our best, to bring out our best, to attain the best. Speak to give people peace of mind, not a peace of your mind. One has to approach with sincerity and intensity. Just because a thought is persistent doesn't make it permanent. Worry is the interest we pay on loans we haven't taken. Therefore, getting opportunities is providence, but grabbing them is diligence. Our choice has a louder voice than our voice. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Every time you become angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. Life is like riding a bicycle, dear friends. You have to keep moving. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And therefore, it's very important for us to recognize this, that each one of us carry unanswered questions arising out of fears from our childhood. Life is good or bad depending on how the world answers our questions with a yes or no. And we also respond to these fears. So therefore, you have to understand our core fear. Ahara nidra bhai maitunam te samana maitat pashubhinna rana dharmo hitesha madiko vishisho dharme nahina pashubhish samana Eating, sleeping and sex life has limits in how, how much time we can do in a day. But fearing continues with us. And one of the biggest challenges leaders are facing globally is almost 80% of the world leaders are unable to sleep properly because of fear. What are the seven questions arising out of fear? First, am I safe? Physically, emotionally, as an adult, am I secure? Is there financial relationship security? Am I loved, known, seen, emotionally attached? Am I wanted? A need to belong arising out of fear of rejection as a child. Am I successful? A need to win, contribute, have status. Am I good enough? Need to be valued and affirmed? Or am I being criticized? Seventh, do I have purpose? You have to work on things which matter. And therefore, many times, people, even when they are in very high-paying jobs after some time, just feel that I just do not have that purpose. So therefore, it's very important that while communicating as a leader, choose your messages to your team members according to the people hearing them, according to those fears, so that the messaging should be feeling welcome and accepted. Because if the core question of the person is, am I wanted? then your answer should be accordingly to affirm that. And therefore, these are things which Ramayana is teaching to all of us very, very wonderfully. So thank you all very much for coming this evening. We have from Ramayana addressed four core principles of leadership. Ram representing integrity, Lakshman represents service attitude, Bharat represents tolerance, and Shatrugna representing humility. These four principles help the leader create leadership in such a way that there is a congenial synergistic relationships amongst team members. And only when there are good relationships, there is happiness. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. It was brilliant, brilliant. I think we'll have a Q&A session with Commander. Please. Yeah. Hello, check. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, 
thank you very much sir for really enlightening discourse we really enjoyed each and every sentence you told all of us there are so many people who heard you even on the youtube also and live on the zoom also thank now the sir. house is open for any questions from anybody thank you yeah uh, okay yeah. anybody any question prabhu ji i see yes, sir, please kalendra varshne ji first and okay varshne ji please go ahead number 2 i see is deepak vora ji and third i see nalin so i think we'll have time for three and hari krishna is my close man so you can wait for some other time hari krishna <laughs> <laughs> please sir namaskar kalendra go ahead yeah so really uh uh excellent to listen to you fantastic i never have thought for the ramayana from this angle and this perspective and uh is a great learning and uh, this has raised to me a few things i just put up on the chat also is there any way on approach to measure this honesty or integrity of any person and what i understand a human being somehow i know me like this is my own observation or own understanding they some homeless in the current world or current scenario they are all always have most of the people are attached with the politics mm. so it's very difficult to separate these human and politics whether it is in a, any work culture in, independent of the real politicians i would say so what's your views on that and how to measure or there any approach to yes. measure the honesty or integrity since you gave the very nice exa- i kind of like example analogy really i liked it when he talked about from the lord rama and then lakshman bharat satrugan tolerance and then the conquering to yourself and then showing the integrity pass so all which is the most important that me attributes but is the noise which is really uh, create lot of troubles lord noise can be externally or internally thank you thank you shailendra bhai so yeah. in the ramayana there is one uh, chapter called kachit sarga and in that it's about questions which as soon as bharat meets ram in the chitrakoot when bharat is going to bring ram back so at that time when ram meets him he asks question so you know one part of education is questioning as or no as rudyard kipling he said that i keep six honest serving men and these men taught us all i know their names are what why when how where who so therefore you know there is a correlationship between the success of an interaction and the degree of questioning in it and a questioning behavior controls attention evokes a response and probably that's the reason why podcasts are so popular so therefore uh in kachit sarga at this time ram asks questions to bharat so it is like kind of you know he doesn't want to immediately uh, he wants to make bharat feel comfortable so he's saying kachit nidra vasam nashi hi kachit kale prabudhyase kachit chapar ratreshu chintayasya arthanaipunam on the personal qualities of a leader he says he is asking bharat oh you are now the leader of ayodhya i hope bharat first do you sleep too much second do you wake at the appropriate time third do you spend early hours of the morning doing your strategy how to achieve your aims then he asks another question kachi darthe nava dharma arth dharme nava puna उभवामीटर्सिंग विभज्य काले कालज्ञ सर्वान भारत सेवसे सो ही सेज डू यू नो द अप्रोप्रिएट टाइम ओ भरत फॉर धर्मार्थ एंड काम डू यू नो भरत व्हिच वन टू परस्यू एट द राइट टाइम सो देन ही सेज 
that my dear bharata a leader should avoid these 14 weaknesses or defects bharat says what 14 defects what are the 14 defects a leader should avoid nastikyam andatam krodham pramadam dirgha sutratam adarshanam jnana vatam alasya pancha vrittitamam ek chintana marthanam anantagyascha mantranam nishchita nama narambham mantrasya parirakshanam mantragalasya prayogam cha pratyutthanam cha sarvata kachitvam varjayeta raja jo raja dosha chaturdasham what are the 14 flaws which defects a leader should avoid first atheism second untruth third anger very very difficult to give up fourth inattention fifth tendency to procrastinate sixth shunning or avoiding the wise or advice which goes against our plan seventh idleness eight various kinds of illicit sexual desires as they say licentiousness ninth not consulting ministers being unilateral tenth consulting people of perverted intellect and getting wrong advice eleventh non commencement of work in the morning that means you just take the morning for granted and take your time to begin the work. Twelfth, O Bharat, do you fail to launch projects which are already decided? Thirteenth, very important, a leader's big defect is failure to keep confidentiality and secrets. And fourteenth is, Bharat, never make the mistake of attacking all enemies simultaneously. That means don't take up too many projects all at once and make a fool out of yourself. So these are, you know, some of the points. I mean, really, sir. Few drops. They Thank very you very much, sir. Really great answer. And that proves further that our scriptures have got real wealth of knowledge. So I think in Parthagosh Academy of Leadership, Ramayana could be one of the study material, you know, given to our people. Uh, yes. Deepak Vora, sir, please uh, go ahead, sir, with your question, sir. Deepak Vora ji. Unmute, sir. Unmute. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, Thank just you before you ask a question, I'm just saying that I have put my email ID on the chat. Yes, yeah. sir. R-A-N-G-A-D-S at ecovillage.org.in So anybody has any questions because we have only four minutes. I don't think we can answer got another engagement. But we would love to keep in touch and you can just send me an email. And since it's a very closed group, I'm also sharing my WhatsApp number. Yes, sir. Okay, so you can feel free to connect, no problem. Over to you, Deepak Ji. Thank you very much, if I may refer to you as Swamiji for uh, an outstanding presentation. I have just one observation to make. Sure. The man I'm privileged to serve, I call him Jamwan, the bear who reminded Bhagwan Sri Hanuman of his strength. Sir, in, in our leadership, Hanuman represents loyalty. He represents total submission to the will of Lord Ram. But in my opinion, because hundreds of thousands of Vanars follow Hanuman, they don't follow Lord Ram. He's a much greater leader. He is able to achieve what, and what the man I'm privileged to serve today says, and I'll say it in Hindi, and I'm quoting him verbatim, Amara Siddhant hai, marenge, ghar mein ghuske. And that's precisely what Lord Hanuman does. Lands in this little island, gives a secret message to Ma Sita, and then destroys the enemy's palace. Why isn't he recognized, sir? 
in terms of leadership as the main character in Vedic uh, science. Hanuman uh, Ji is recognized the most. I would say there may be more Hanuman Ji temples than <laughs> even Ram temples as far as I have seen. So, <laughs> You know, I, I don't have data on that, but prima facie, that's how it appears. I wear him on my chest, Swamiji. So yes. he's always with me. So Hanumanji represents uh, the tattwa of being the ambassador and the servant and the emissary of the Lord. And therefore, he is the one who connects Lord Ram to Sita. And in fact, when he was coming back and then Lord Ram was looking at Hanumanji after coming back from Lanka. What will be the message? Did he find Sita? So therefore, Hanumanji was thinking, Lord Ram is in so much of anxiety to hear that I have found Sita. That if I say, Sita is found, then as soon as he hears the first word Sita, Ram will be in anxiety. Found or not found? <laughs> Or if I say, I found Sita, Lord Ram, after hearing the word I, will be in anxiety. Are found or not found? And even in that period between I and the second word, he may collapse. So Hanumanji knew sensitively that what my master wants to hear, found. And therefore he answered. He came down and the first message he gave Ram was, found Sita I, which is grammatically not correct, but emotionally that's what the master wanted to hear. So then thank you, Swami. Thank you. Better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that is the know. Japanese sequence, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese, we would talk about that. <laughs> Trust Dr. Partha Ghosh to, to, to say something brilliant, always. <laughs> thank you. Uh, as uh, I would request Swamiji uh, has to go. Yeah. He has got another engagement. I will straight away request all those who have got the questions, please send email to Swamiji and Parthoda kindly conclude. Yes, yeah, Swamiji, uh, just give us one minute to conclude. And uh, give a word of thanks also yourself. Okay, I will do that. Um, firstly, it was brilliant. I mean, it goes without any doubt that we anyone could have done a better job to take so much of lessons from the four names which we all have celebrated in Ramayana. That was fantastic. The key takeaway from me is the word that you gave, choice over voice. Because I think in leadership, we make choice choices, how we lead our life, where integrity comes in, how ethical we are, getting up in the morning, being loyal to our purpose. So I think the key word I will take away is choice over voice. I think we enjoy listening to our voice and often make wrong choices. So I think if we could now onwards focus on choice and in the process celebrate the four points made, which is about integrity, seva, competence, and of course, tolerance and humility. I think naturally the leadership qualities would grow. And that is the whole purpose of our academy. That's the whole purpose of what Vedic philosophy has been preaching us, reminding us for the last thousands of years. But somehow we have forgotten about it. We don't practice. We talk about it. Time has come that we practice it with 100% honesty. And then we will see a lot of Rams, a lot of Bharats among us. And that would beautify the country and the world. I think if Indian philosophy could become the model of the world, I think we have done service to our civilization. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone on uh, behalf of IIT Kharagpur, on behalf of the academy, and on behalf of the very esteemed audience that we had today from different parts of the world, that Prabhuji, that you gave us the time and gave shared with us the thoughts, your words of wisdom to make our life a better place. And Hare Krishna Ji, thank you for the introduction. Guru Nadas, we'll see you yeah, in Karakpur, in Mayapur, whichever pool you want us, we'll be there. Thank you, thank thank you, you. sir. Let's give a big hand. Thank you, sir.
थैंक यू सॉक थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रणव थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू बाबूजी थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू